Hello everyone. Um, <laughs> welcome to Fairly Unbalanced with me, Mike Talon. Uh, I just wanted to talk for a couple of minutes today um, about some news that came in last night that I'm sure you received as well, that Jimmy Carter, uh, the 39th President of the United States, um, and fundamentally decent human being, has, at 98 years of age, opted to be uh, to be placed in hospice care in his home rather than continuing treatment for his various ailments. Uh, for political junkies like me, for progressives like me, uh, and I presume for people like you, this is this is really sad news because because Jimmy was just simply a really, really, really good dude. Uh, step aside from the from from his time in in office as the governor of Georgia and the president of the United States. Uh, step aside from the stagflation and the economic troubles and the loss to Reagan and all of that for a minute, and just look at what the man has done in the years since with Habitat for Humanity uh, and the the moral guidance he has provided to several generations now of. Uh, of, uh, of Americans and people from around the world. And he will, he's still with us, uh, but uh, when he goes, he'll be sorely missed. And we can all hope that, uh, that his transition is peaceful and that he is with his beloved wife, Rosalind, um, and that their love endures right to the end. But I wanted to take a minute to speak about the politics of Jimmy Carter for a minute, because often that stuff is set aside uh, because of uh, because he's not widely viewed as a great president, he certainly got his butt kicked in the election with Ronald Reagan in 1980. But I want to drive to one very small uh, policy decision he made when he was in office that um, that had we had we followed for the last 45 years or so, would have made the world such a better place. In 1979, uh, Jimmy Carter, uh, looking at the science of climate change and also recognizing the, the, uh, the, the foreign policy entanglements that one gets into when one has to deal with OPEC all the time, uh, decided that we needed to begin to transition our economy away from fossil fuels. And part of the way that he, that he encouraged, encouraged this change was he put solar panels on the top of the White House. It was a fairly performative act of politics. Uh, the technology for solar panels at the time was not super great. Uh, the, uh, the cost efficiency of solar energy was limited. But it was a symbol. And it said to the public, to the people, we, your government, and we as Americans saying to the world, we can look at the challenges that we're facing uh, as a giant human family on a planet that's heating up, and we can act together. Now will we have the opportunity. It said, we see the world clearly and we will make hard choices, choices that aren't always popular, that will attempt to mitigate the damage that the real world is bringing to our doorstep. Uh, he had that message in a lot of ways for the people of the United States. And in 1980, they got a choice and they decided they didn't want to hear that at all. Rather, they would want to hear the, uh, the, the blustering braggadocious, arrogant, swaggering, deeply, oh, I'm a macho American, of Ronald Reagan. And Ronald Reagan, when he took office, aside from all of the other disasters that that foolish, foolish man brought to our, uh, brought to our world, uh, and we could do a whole series of videos on that, uh, one of the first things he did was that he ordered that the solar panels be removed from the roof of the White House. If Jimmy Carter's decision was symbolic, Ronald Reagan's was even more symbolic. And what it said is, rather than, we're Americans, we humbly recognize the truth of the world and the changing economy and the changing climate, and we will, we will act 
uh, to fit into the structures of that world in a way that is beneficial not only to the people of the future but to the people all over the world uh, now and for generations to come. Ronald Reagan uh, and the American right took the other path and they said, screw it, science be damned, we don't care. We're Americans, we get to do what we want. If we want to burn fossil fuels, then God damn it, we're going to burn fossil fuels. And this fundamental difference, this breaking point between Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan in 1980 leads in two great trajectories away. And about half of my population of Generation X, we, we tended towards the Jimmy Carter side. We read our Noam Chomsky, we read our Edward Said, we read our Arundhati Roy, we became pro-labor Democrats, we became pro-LGBT Democrats, we pushed for the further integration in civil rights, we diversified our party, we became Greens, we became Obama voters, and ultimately we became what is now derided, but I proudly claim as woke. Uh, the other half of the population took the Ronald Reagan chest-pounding, militaristic, Gordon Gecko foolishness that said, since we're Americans, we can bury our damn heads in the sand and we can just wish all of this science away. And, and so, yeah, Ronald Reagan, he won a big election against Jimmy Carter because his message of foolish arrogance was a hell of a lot more uh, uh, palatable uh, to the uh, to the generations of voters in 1980, uh, along with his appeals to racism and states' rights and all sorts of craziness, uh, was more palatable to a majority of voters than was was Jimmy Carter's message of "Hey, we got to take the world seriously. These are real issues. These are real problems, and we are facing some crises in the future unless we act now." And that simple choice between do we put solar panels on the White House or do we get rid of them is a breaking point in American history. One path, had we followed it, would have led to increased investment in research and technologies. It would have led to increased energy independence, not international dependence on foreign oil. It would have led to a world that is simply better than the one that we're in now. And the one that we're in now, if you think that these trajectories are no longer operative, look at Ron DeSantisaurus down in Florida, who is making hay and trying to become the leader of the free world by saying that you're going to have to come and pry my gas stove from my cold, dead fingers Ugh, with these people. Had we listened to Jimmy a long, long time ago, uh, we would have been better off. And that's the truth for our side, our channel, and that political break, and their channel, and their side, and that political break. It remains true now. We're still right. They're still wrong. But for now, we pause, and we hope that uh, everyone can at least recognize that President Jimmy Carter, uh, though still with us, soon to be gone, uh, was a truly great man, a visionary leader, and God damn it, we should have listened to him more. Um, love to you, Jimmy. Love to you, Rosalind. We all hope that you're together, and otherwise, just in general, love to you all. Unless you're one of those fascists that took the other path. In that case, pfft. see you next time. <laughs>